will come to order. Prayer by the chaplain. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you this day with gratitude for another day to serve you. Grant to these elected representatives a generous portion of your wisdom so that they may discern what is right and have the courage to do it, working together for the common good of all the people of this state whom they are privileged to represent. We make this prayer in your powerful and holy name. Amen. The chaplain for today is Deacon Nathan E. Allen from the Archdiocese of St. Paul and Minneapolis, right here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The clerk will take the roll.
The clerk will close the roll. Quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. <clears throat> Journal of the House, 90th Session, 2018, 75th Day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Monday, March 26, 2018. If there is no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with, and the journal will be approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. I know you know Reports of standing committees and divisions. There are copies of this order of business on each member's desk. If there's no objection, the reports will be adopted. <laughs> Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. <clears throat> Second reading of House Files. <clears throat> Second reading House File number 192. Second reading. Second reading House File 1481. Second reading. Second reading House File 1876. Second reading. Second reading House File 1933. Second reading. Second reading House File 2739. Second reading. Second reading House File 2908. Second reading. Second reading House File 2967. Second reading. Second reading House File 3120. Second reading. Second reading House File 3232. Second reading. Second reading House File 3273. Second reading. Second reading House File 3295. Second reading. Second reading House File 3371. Second reading. Second reading House File 3611. Second reading. Second reading House File 3611. Second reading. Second reading House File 4044. Second reading. And second reading House File 4168. Second reading. <clears throat> introduction of bills. The following House files have been offered for introduction today. The Chief Clerk will report the House files and give them their first reading. Introduction of first reading of House Files 4257 through 4283. First reading, House Files 4257 through 4283. <clears throat> Report from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. <clears throat> Pepin, from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, pursuant to Rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bills to be placed on the calendar for the day for Thursday, March 29, 2018, and establishes a pre-filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bills. House file numbers 3622, 2363, and 3972. <clears throat> Recognize the member from Otter Tail, Representative <laughs> Nornis. For what purpose do you rise? Mine works. Is your? Please stand by. We apparently have a minor technical difficulty. <laughs> we'll get it corrected quickly. One moment. Test, test. Recognize the member from Otter Tail, Representative Nornis. For what purpose do you rise? Uh, point of personal privilege. State your point of personal privilege. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members, I, I just wanted to uh, inform the body uh, of a passing of a former member of the House. Uh, his name was Paul Osnes, and I think probably Representative Carlson might be the only one that served with him back in 1975. He was elected in 1975, served two terms. He was a a uh, former legislator who actually was a neighbor of mine, and he died. He went in for a minor heart procedure, and he wound up with a, um, they ruptured an artery, and he died from that. Um, so he was elected in, I said 75, 78 actually is when he was elected. I'll uh, just tell you a little bit about Paul. He represented Otter Tail and Grant County in those days in the House. He served for two terms, as I said. Received the Young Farmer Award from the JCs in 75. Uh, he served on the Minnesota Wheat Research and Promotion Council. And he was most proud of not only his family, but the fact that he was able to farm his entire life. He died at age 78. Uh, for 20 years, he led weekly Bible studies at the Otter Tail County Jail. I also served on the board of the Jail Incorporated Ministries. Uh, he had four children, and uh, Perry Osnes, some of you might know, is the executive director of the Minnesota Agri-Growth, and um, I think most people have, have met him. 
So, members, I just request a moment of silence uh, in memory of Paul Osnes. Members, please rise for a moment of silence. Recognize the member from Monoman, Representative Green. For what purpose do you rise? Point of personal privilege, Mr. Speaker. State your point of personal privilege. Mr. Speaker and members uh, in the gallery behind me, we have the honor today of uh, hosting the White Earth Boys and Girls Club. They came down to join us today, see how things work. Very happy to have them, a great group of young folks. The member from Wright, Representative McDonald, for what purpose do you rise? Point of personal privilege, Mr. Speaker. State your point of personal privilege. Mr. Speaker and members, I know this is a little bit of untraditional, but I also want to say just a few things about the late Representative Paul Osnes. He was my father, K.J. McDonald's best and favorite friend down here, no offense to the other friends, but they were dear colleagues, many times in prayer during the tumultuous 80s and the farming crisis. And he became a good family friend as well. His children and my brothers and sisters grew up together, spent many days on the farm, up in his farm during the summer, helping him bale hay and take care of his farm. But he was a dear, beloved man. And as a little boy, when I had run around this gallery and through Al's legs and up and down the corridors and the galleries, he was one of the most kindest, even more than my father, to me as a little boy, which attracted me to this great body to continue to run and to serve. So I just wanted to mention that uh, I'm moved by the spirit to say a few words about good old Paul Osnes, who was a wonderful man and treated everyone with so kindness and love. And it's a great example for all of us here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member from Carleton, Representative Sundin, for what purpose do you rise? A point of personal privilege. State Mr. your point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, in 2000, 2007-2008, Minnesota uh, House of Representatives had a record number of bills introduced at 4,256 uh, bills. Today we've exceeded that uh, number by a, a total of uh, 26 bills. So we're setting new records here today. And uh, I, I don't see uh, Representative Zerbos at, uh, in, in the chamber, but uh, he'll be receiving an award from uh, one of our distinguished paper makers from International Falls uh, for all his contributions of 118 bills. Thank you. The member from Beltrami, Representative Bliss, for what purpose do you rise? Point of personal privilege, Mr. Speaker. State your point of personal privilege. Uh, today, you probably got a chance to visit with your local Boys and Girls Club uh, organizations, and I am here to introduce a very special member of the Boys and Girls Club. Ellie Shimkus is a junior at Bemidji High School, and Bemidji Youth of the Year uh, was just awarded to the Minnesota State. She was just awarded the Minnesota State Youth of the Year title yesterday. After a full day of interviews and presentations, in order to compete for this prestigious honor and receive $15,000 in scholarship, thanks to Toyota, Disney, Fox Sportsnet, and our state's professional sports teams, Allie created a portfolio composed of a memorized speech, three essays, three letters of recommendations, transcript, and other supporting documents. The Bemidji Club hosts a local competitions where teens give their speech and are, and are interviewed by a panel of judges. As Minnesota State Youth of the Year, Allie will go on to represent the state of Minnesota and the 45,000 Minnesota youth boys and girls uh, that the, the club serve at the Midwest Youth Year uh, event in Chicago in July. Let's give Allie a round of applause.
Motion. Uh, motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there's no objection, we'll take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. There are a series of motions at the desk. The clerk will report the motions. <clears throat> Albright moves that House File Number 3195, now on the General Register, be re-referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services Finance. Recognize the uh, from Scott member Mr. from Scott, <laughs> Representative Albright. <laughs> You know, I, I, it's a little known secret, but you have your counties in front of you, so I can always look at them, but now you're not in front of your, your placards, so Representative uh, Albright, please I thought proceed. we knew each other better than that, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, this uh, motion uh, is uh, reflective of that uh, House File 3195 uh, has a fiscal note attached to it, it needs to keep, go back to House uh, Health and Human Services <laughs> Finance uh, to be pro properly vetted there. That is my motion. Discussion on the Albright motion. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying <coughs> aye. Those opposed, no. Motion prevails. Albright moves that House File Number 3273, now on the General Register, be re-referred to the Committee on State Government Finance. Recognize the member from Scott, Representative Albright, to your Thank motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this also has a fiscal note, and I've spoken with the chairs of both committees. We're bringing it back so that we can properly vet it and stake up by. Discussion on the Albright motion. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, no. Motion prevails. <clears throat> Albright again moves that House File number 3851 be recalled from the Committee on Health and Human Services Reform and be re referred to the Committee on Government Operations and Elections Policy. Recognize the member from Scott, Representative Albright. To Thank your you, Mr. Motion. Speaker. I have not used all my coupons in state government uh, <laughs> operations, and so I'd like to have this one referred <clears throat> back so that I can have some more time with the chair. Any discussion on the Albright motion? Uh, Representative Liebling, you'll have to use the microphone over here, I think. Oh, boy. The member from Olmsted, Representative Liebling, discussion on the Albright motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I don't know if maybe you have the mute button pushed up there. So, I do not. I Thank not. you. So uh, I just, if, if Representative Albright would yield to a question, please. He will yield, Representative Thank you, Mr. Uh, Liebling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Albright, would you just tell us a little bit, I hate to break up the party, but what is the bill and why does it not belong in HHS reform? Uh, Representative uh, Liebling and Mr., uh, Mr. Speaker, this is uh, a bill that regards uh, the American Indian Welfare City, uh, Council, and we're extending the sunset provision on it. Uh, it was re-referred initially after first reading to the wrong uh, committee. We're bringing it back and putting it in, in front of government operations. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Albright. Any further discussion on the Albright motion? Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, no. Motion prevails. <clears throat> Lewick moves that Senate file number 1694 be recalled from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration and be re-referred to the Committee on State Government Finance. Recognize the member from Crow Wing, Representative Lewick, to your motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the motion would simply move uh, the Senate file back to uh, government uh, finance where the companion House file bill rests right now. Any discussion on the motion? And you're Aiken County, correct? I'm actually both crowing in Aiken County. Where do you live, proudly, We recognize I, you by where you live. I do live in Aiken County. Aiken County. My apologies. The member from <laughs> Aiken. Any discussion on the member from Aiken's motion? <laughs> Seeing no discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails. Thank you. Announcements. The member from Hennepin, Representative Pepin. I'm wondering if anybody else would like to try out this microphone before we <laughs> move on. No, Mr. Speaker, I move that when the House adjourned today, it adjourns until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, March 29th, 2018. Representative Pepin moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 3.30 p.m. on Thursday, March 29th, 2018. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Motion prevails. Representative Pepin. I move that the House do now adjourn. Uh, members, thank you so much for your patience with the microphones. We'll get that problem fixed. Uh, actually, a little bit fun today to do it a little differently. But uh, uh, Representative Pepin moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye. 
Those opposed, no. no. The motion prevails, and the House stands adjourned until 3.30 p.m. Thursday, March 29, 2018.